Since leaving Rio, Delos had been exploring the coast of Bahia, slowly making our way north. We were exploring, but we are also waiting. Waiting for a weather window that would let us sail to our next port, Recife, about 450 miles north of our current position. This stretch of the Brazilian coast is tricky because the weather that made it so easy to sail to southern Brazil was now conspiring against us. The South Atlantic Equatorial Current runs east to west, and when it strikes the continent, it gets split in half. One portion runs up towards the Caribbean, but the other half gets directed south. To make matters worse, the wind for the past few weeks had been out of the northeast. Sailing directly into the wind against current is really a bad proposition, and we tried to avoid it at all costs. Time constraints are a sailor's worst enemy, but we could wait no longer. Our beloved Austrian pirate had only planned to sail on Delos to Namibia, but weeks had stretched into nine solid months of sailing. Lisa had crossed an ocean and explored two continents in the process, but now it was her time to head back to Austria to family and work. The weather had been constant for weeks, so we decided to motor sail straight into it. So we are in this river down here and we're trying to make it eventually to Recife, which is right here. It's 429 miles from where we are right now. So I'm gonna pull up the hook and go for it. We are expecting a very bumpy ride and so far it is pretty bumpy. Right now we're beating into 25 knots and it's actually not that comfortable. <laughs> Nobody is feeling that well. <laughs> Kaza made a delicious dinner. Here it is. Um, it's kind of a lasagna noodle mix. Really, really, really good. Uh, but she's the only one who touched it so far. I'm trying to snack on it but I don't feel so well either. We've got uh, one reef in the jib to keep us going a little bit slower, which helps with the comfort when we slam into the waves. Yeah, our forward cabin right now, you can't go into it <laughs> even to grab something. I just get thrown around when I go up there. So we definitely can't be sleeping up there right now. So Brady and I are just sleeping on the couches in the salon, but it's time for me to go to bed soon, or try to at least. Good night. So, I don't know what time it is really, but we are just slamming into it right now. Slamming. This is the first time ever, ever, in my entire life and in the last eight months I see this happen during sailing. Watch out. Ryan is making popcorn. Why do you make popcorn? Because it's good. I have the snack attacks. There you go, Lisa, Lisa. Enjoy. Oh, muito obrigado. Look at this beautiful popcorn. Uh -huh. The wind, instead of it being east like it was supposed to be, it's actually north. And it's really bumpy, like the swells come up a lot, so uh, this is kind of how it looks like now. <laughs> and we're into the current, so we're kind of getting f***ed. 
and I've been thinking about this for a couple days, but I'm gonna try and put the, the jib, just a little bit of it out, and then run it to the mast, so the center of the boat instead of on the outside of the rails, to see if we can point higher and sail more. Because we're motor sailing now, but we need to run the water maker, which means we need to run the generator, and running the generator and the main in the engine room at the same time gets really hot. So let's see if this works and then we can sail and make some water at the same time. How low are we on water? 50, li under 50. 50 liters or something like that. She said when I die, come back as a butterfly. Everyone will know my name. Alright, right, you can go ahead and make some water now. At least I can get started. Turn it up for a while. You don't know, you don't care, no care. You better run just to get started. Finished our first day out at sea. It's gonna be a good sunset for sure. There's an incredible moon out tonight. Let's see if you can see this. It is super bright. I love to sail under the bright moonlight. I love it when the reflection on the water is so bright that you can actually see every single movement, every small movement of the water. Oh, it's so beautiful. Good morning. I think it's day three, maybe four. And this is my first sunrise watch. I've got the little GoPro climb a gimbal taking a time lapse of this crazy beast. Look at this sunrise. I think we have about 170 miles to Recife. Still same same, not much going on. Brian is practicing Portuguese lessons and I think something is happening in the kitchen because it's Alex is cooking there today. Oh, lunch is ready! This one's special because it's such a Papa Grub size that I can't even close it and it's made with love. <laughs> Aww, how sweet! You're the best! <laughs> Yum! Well, the weather's definitely gotten worse. The winds come up, the swells come up. We're just bashing, bashing, bashing into it. It was so hectic that our old navigation pad just decided to fly out of the its space here on the nav station and crash into the floor. Shame. It's a spectacular sunset today. What a incredibly frustrating night. <laughs> It's uh, almost four o'clock and we are just getting completely screwed. <laughs> I don't know, I've never seen it like this. <laughs> we are only going about half a knot actually. Um, we're quite close to shore now, about five miles to foot. And there is like two knots of current against us and the wind was right on our nose so we we're actually barely moving actually getting pushed right into a oil field of moored boats or something like this man when we hit some of these waves it sounds like we're hitting something else other than water <laughs> it's 
actually kind of creaky. I know Delos has seen much worse, but this passage beating into it like this has really, really, really made me appreciate all of our other passages and how chill they've been. Um, me or Brady haven't set foot in our front cabin for the last five days. I can't imagine what it would have been like if we couldn't have gone in our cabin for the whole Atlantic crossing like months. So I'm glad we're gonna be there soon. We're only 22 miles away from Hesife. It's about eight in the morning right now. We're in a bit of a predicament. You can only get into the yacht club at high tide. And high tide is in 40 minutes. And we have wind and current against us. Next high tide is 9 p.m. tonight or tomorrow morning. Okay, do we have any other options? Yes. We just don't know what they are yet. <laughs> Slowly they will start boiling to the surface. You're losing it, mate. I am losing it. That's wrong. I don't know. My computer, I think, is gone. No, don't say that. We just hit a massive wave. And I look down, I hear a bunch of water. What happened? That hatch isn't too water tight anymore. No. It was like three liters of water just poured down onto the table and splashed all over my computer and stuff. The bow went up in the air and dropped like three or four meters and then popped through another wave. And like this, it splashed and I think it went into my my big space vents back here. Now my computer won't charge, it won't turn on, it won't, won't do anything. Which is bad. I'm in the middle of a project. Right. To finish editing for Friday. Remain hopeful. Give me your best hopeful face. There we go. That's it. That's a good one. Yeah. And we have about five miles to go. Might take us everything from two to four hours. We have never been closer. It's very true. But the city is pretty cool. After that fantastic cool off, we decided to anchor Delos just inside the channel to wait for the tide. While we were waiting, I decided to see what was up with Mr. Brady's computer. Good thing my older brother is an electrical engineer. <laughs> so we found some salt crystals on this on off switch. Okay, I said we clean this switch. Yeah, clean the shit out of that. <laughs> I like that. I'm holding my thumbs, Kaza. It's a Swedish folklore. You hold your thumbs. Okay, everything's in. The moment of truth. Oh, there it goes. Ah. Welcome back. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Good job, Ooh, boys. That's, our brush. that's incredible. We just saved a lot of time and money and heartache and pain and sadness. 9 p.m., and the tide's in our favor. Some guys from the Yacht Club even came out to escort us through the poorly marked channel. Now we're following the orange dinghy. We have 0.3 meters under us, or less. <laughs> okay. Keep the speed up, bro. We'll blast right through it. That was exhausting. The whole five days was exhausting. Now you know what it's time for? A shower, a big meal, and then a sleep without the boat moving. We'll see you tomorrow. It's a super exciting morning. It's pretty early still. It's like five something. I'm so awake <laughs> because my brother is arriving today and his girlfriend Maria to have family and 
and friends out in that way, it's, it's super special. Because I see them so rarely, like last time I saw my brother was like a year ago. So let's go and meet them. Bonjour, bonjour. Hey man. How's it man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey. How are you doing? Good, good. Made it, made it, made it. Here they are. Welcome to Delos. Thanks, Maria's well, never been on board before. Ragnar was back in Borneo days. Like three and a half, four years ago. Wow. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, Asia. So the vacation has come to an end. It's time to go home. Be back when you guys are in Brazil, that's for sure. So this is our home for this three is weeks? It. This is it. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on here? We brought a present bag from Sweden. What? Present for everybody. That's a nice bag. I want the bag. Is it no, you can't get the bag. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Some stuff is ordered, but then wrapped. So Some stuff is present. So like, so get the present feeling. That's awesome. This is a little bit of a tradition on Delos. Anyone that flies in has to bring both parts, spare items and random treats. And this time wasn't any different. These guys are hilarious. All they do is they stand on top of the boats and they yell back and forth. Hey brother, what's going on man? It's a cool marina, but we've spent a lot of time here. When we got here, I think we were all ready to just decompress for a while. So we did like a really super deep clean on Delos. We met some cool people last night. Hello. Hi. Hi. Nice, to nice to meet you. To meet you. This is Rodrigo and his daughter Maria Clara. Yes. Oh, cool. <laughs> we saw you guys on the Instagram. Yeah. You like sailing. Yeah. We love it. We love you. <laughs> She's gonna grow up to be a sailor, I can tell. Oh, yeah. nice. Hey, Luke. Oh, sweet. That's so nice. Let me see it, Kaza. It's an awesome picture. Oh, cool. Oh, we need to hang this one up somewhere. <laughs> okay, that you can put on the wall anywhere you want to go. Yeah. Choose your place wisely. And cover your eyes if you look at too many things on there. That's a good place. Look at that. Yeah. Right under the Buddha man. Cool. So Lisa flies out tonight and uh, Karen's brother is here now and we're gonna go on an adventure today to an old town called Olinda. So it's really our first day of exploring Recife since we've been here. It really is, yeah. Just near the marina on the on the back side there's a pretty poor favela area and most of them are fishermen. So out here this big river channel area. They're wait they wait for low tide and then they walk around and they catch these white crabs like this big. And they're they're all out there just walking around collecting crabs and, and using nets to catch whatever fish are floating around. It's kinda gross though because this water is stinky and full of trash. Ugh. Yeah, it's not the cleanest water at all, but I guess people gotta eat. Yeah, Good morning, Mr. Brady. What's up, man? What's up, bro? How are you today? I'm okay. Let's go, Alinda. Yeah. Back to you, Alinda. Vamos, Alinda. Vamos. <laughs> the Recife metro area is the fourth biggest in Brazil, with a population of nearly four million people. The city was founded in 1537 in a floodplain between two rivers, which provided an easy means to get sugarcane and other goods to the coast. Recife is actually named after the long offshore reef that protects its natural harbor. Olinda is located in the hills above the new city, making it a prime lookout point for the early Portuguese colonizers watching their ships coming into port. It wasn't long before we met Fernando, willing to guide us around for just a few reais. I like his music. I like music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like your radio. Yeah, it's like super it. cool. Much bom. America, canta muito bom. Olinda was conquered by the Dutch in the 1600s, so the streets and buildings are an interesting mix of colonial styles. And if you're into street art, it's an amazing place to explore the afternoon away.
The entire colonial economy was built on the backs of slaves, forced into sugarcane production. Even churches and the buildings that were to become the prisons were built with slave labor. The Ribeira Market was once the region's center for the slave trade, and Brazil was the last country in the Western world to abolish slavery in 1888. Now the market serves a much different role, as a workshop for the local artists. Ah, that's a uh, dick. Stop. <laughs> yeah, watch. <but. laughs> ah, <laughs> I got it. I got another one. Another one. That's a booty. Oh, wow. Good day. Oh, yeah. Good day. I'm tired and ready for a nap, though. So we came back from our adventure today. And what is going on, Lisa? I'm packing my stuff because I'm flying back to Austria today. So I have to clear the love tunnel after my month. And that's a little bit emotional. And I mean, I never thought that I would stay so long anyways. I thought I would stay for one month. When we first saw your video and you joined and it was supposed to be for I don't even, we don't even know, two weeks or whatever it was going to be, a small voyage, and then after we started to get to know you and we decided to come to Brazil, I had no idea that it would be nine months later and be such a big part of our family. It's yeah. been a hell of a ride. A hell of a ride. <laughs> I'm just thankful and I feel very blessed and honored that I'm, I had the chance to live with these people in this tiny space and sail from Cape Town to Recife. Yeah, it has been an amazing journey. Thanks to you guys out there for uh, being part of my journey on Delos and um, yeah, keep on supporting this awesome project and these awesome people here. They are, they have good hearts and they only want the best for this world and this is something truly special. Love to you, bye bye. It's time. Hi. Everything has an end and a new beginning, so yeah. this is mine. I think we definitely have to finish my adventure with a round of shots as well. Cheers! Lisa, who will always have a home wherever we are. Thank you. Yes. Cheers. Cheers, Lisa. Cheers, Lisa. Cheers. Cheers. We love you. incredibly hard to say goodbye. I just want to tell Lisa that I absolutely freaking love you. We've been able to talk about small and big things and it's something that I, that kind of friend like I've been missing for so long and you've definitely been there for me so I'll miss you. I miss you, my movie buddy, so much. Okay. Love you, Lisas. Love you more. Remember, it's not a Duma. We love you, Lisa. Hey, stay Lisa, okay? Now I think I'm gonna have a cup of tea and sit outside and breathe for a little bit. <laughs> So today is a very, very busy day because it's hopefully our last day before we leave La Cife. But there's a lot going on today that we need to finish before we go. Right now, Brian is 
uh, checking us in and out of Pernambuco, the state that we're in right now. Uh, Kaza is kind of getting everything sorted on the boat because we're about to go provision for fresh food. Um, we've done all the other provisioning so far, but not the fresh stuff. Um, Maria is sewing some stuff and Ragnar and Brady just went um, to fill up our fuel tanks because we need to put some more fuel in Delos because we've been doing an awful lot of motoring. Yes, a lot of things going on. Okay, so the mission was a success. I've got all my angle iron pieces made up. We're going to be putting them on the bottom of the dinghy mount. Back to, to this guy. I got a helper and we got beer. Let's do it. We're gonna see if we can fix the seal on this because we don't want any more ruined computers. So we're gonna see if we can actually get it to kind of work properly. We put in the new seal. And we fixed this part. So now I'm just testing if it's leaking. Definitely way better. So I don't think it will leak anymore. That's good. Ooh. What work? So Karen and Alex and Ragnar and Marina, Marina, Maria have gone shopping today, provisioning. Brian and I are stuck still on the boat, getting other projects done before we sail out of Hisife. What are you doing up here with your voltmeter? For, for a while this one worked perfect and then it started flashing Yeah. and they're totally sealed units so they're not like you can change the bulbs or anything like that. So basically what this tells me is that somewhere between the wiring comes up the side of the boat into here and then there's a junction box where the wire goes over to here and over to here and that tells me that the wire going over to here is corroded or broken or has come loose or something. I think the very first thing we have to do is make sure these are cold. Karen's brother Ragnar likes his beer and drinks quite a bit of it when he's on holiday with us. So I'm gonna make sure when he gets back from provisioning with the ladies, he's got a nice cold brew waiting for him. Of course, bring one to Brian and get the GoPro set up for a time lapse. Yes. Looks like this piece got wet. You can see corrosion in there. So I've cut it out. I'm gonna twist the wires together and since it's in an area that can stay damp, I might solder it and then use these heat shrink tubings to waterproof it. What's the plan, Mr. Brother? Well, I'm gonna go up and check a few things on the rig. Just do a little inspection. We also noticed our tricolor nav light's not working. I'm gonna see if it's the bulb or a connection. I'm gonna replace the main halyard block up there. And I'm also gonna check the uh, halyard for the main, I think, right? Don't yeah. let me forget to do that. Okay. Okay. Coming down. Coming down. The rig was all good, no damage on the rig. Yeah, the rig looks good. It looks good. Nice. With all our projects complete, Delos and her crew are ready for our next adventure. Up next. First casualty. I got a briar bra just in case she goes over. <laughs> and we run Delos aground, trying to go up a shallow river. I can't see anything. <gasps> There's bottom right there. <gasps> We're more than halfway turned around right now. Okay, go. I'm going in the wrong throat. <laughs> the wrong throat. <laughs> I have to send a hard drive to Kirill to keep on working on Delos episodes. I am going to put a special folder in here. It's called Naked Party Girls Swimming. And that party never happened, but there's going to be two video clips in there. <laughs> Love you, Kirill. Hope you enjoy that thong, mate. <laughs>